Hello and welcome to this next Marvelous Designer tutorial. This is my first in uh, MD11. Uh, so your interface might look a little bit different if you're on MD10. Uh, so let me just minimize that. So what we're going to do is set up a little um, avatar in Dash Studio. And we're going to put some animation on it and then bring it back in. And uh, the animation is going to look something like this. There we go. So she's just going into a single pose to start with, and then she's going to spring out and go into a second pose. And that's deliberate because what I want it to do is uh, move, rest, and settle, and then come back again and move more. So I want there to be some kind of movement to get a bit of extra interest in the uh, the final thing. Plus, I can pick any frame along the way that I want, and we're all good. So first thing we need to do is set up an avatar in Marvelous Designer, which we'll do in the next section. Okay, so we're in Dose Studio now, and I'm in the um, library under People and Characters, and I'm gonna bring in uh, ICO 8. There we go. That'll give us a good start. And what I want to do here is now set up my starting pose. Now you might think it would just be this standard A pose, but I'm making a dress here and I'm not intending it to rig it in any way, shape or form, I'm just making a dress. And for that, her legs are uh, not at the optimal uh, place because I want this dress to be straight. And when I make it, it is by kind of definition going to be much wider at her mid thigh. So I'm just going to move her leg a bit close to the middle. Let's make it uh, eight. That might be a bit far. Let's have a look at the front camera. That thing's all right. Then I'll select the other leg. And again, I'm on parameters. And this time we'll go minus eight. There we go. Just making sure uh, yeah, legs are intersecting. I don't want it to be you know crushed up. Okay, so that's our first uh, pose piece. And what I'm gonna do now is bring my frames out to, uh, I don't know, somewhere about 10, and slide my little guide up here. And then I'm just gonna pick from some of the preset poses. So if I go to base poses, uh, I want to have this one to start with. So she's crouching down there's a bit of movement there and then I'm going to move out again to somewhere around about 20 and I'll give her another pose let's use that one it's kind of almost not opposite but you know the direction is uh, opposite I, yeah I don't know if that even makes sense to me so with that done uh, I think we're pretty much ready to export uh, let's go perspective just for fun uh, so what I want to do is go to file and export uh, down the bottom I want to pick Autodesk FBX and then uh, I'll call it posed G8 just so it's different from my testing one so I've got figures and animations selected and embed textures collect into a folder uh, allow degraded skinning and allow degraded scaling and I'll hit accept and that will now go off and export to our folder uh, so when I come back we'll import this into uh, MD and we'll get going so I'll talk to you then okay so we're back in MD and I'm just going to go file import and oh not obj silly man uh, let's cancel that file import fbx and then i'll pick my fbx file um for, uh, file uh, so i've got animations cast animations uh the scale uh, i exported a Dash studio scale so i've got uh, centimeters Dash studio and then i'll click ok and when it comes in eventually takes a moment or two uh, we should be ready 
might speed this up a bit now hmm. ah there we go so now she's imported in and if i look at the timeline uh, we should be right at the beginning if i click that one and now my animation is in doing exactly what i wanted it to do which is perfect so let's just close that and pop that back i'm going to put this uh, monochrome surface back on for more uh, just in case sake and uh, when we come back we're going to start to build our dress so i'll talk to you then okay so i've just got a quick reference up on screen this is the kind of thing i'm going for uh, so it's a fairly sort of form-fitting dress um but it has kind of overlapping uh, panels so rather than doing overlapping panels to start with we're going to make the dress shape and form fitting and then we'll add those as we go so let's go back into uh, marvelous design i'm going to hide the timeline and on this side on the 2d pattern window we'll start drawing out uh, the front uh, side of our dress we're only going to do one side because I want them to be identical uh, but I want them to uh, how can I put it I don't want to do the work twice and I don't want to you know mess about adjusting things so it's pretty tight around our neck so let's uh, get the polygon tool up I'm going to start in the middle somewhere around there and then come down to as far as as low as I want it to be I'm going to move outwards and then upwards I'm going to try and sort of hug her uh, shape if that makes sense and I'm going outside of the avatar here because our um, clothing is going to wrap around about halfway around our avatar so it needs a bit of extra space and I might get it wrong first time probably will um, but you know it's good to estimate these things so as I said just uh, click around and then whoops that's not putting that point down there pop a point in to uh, close the, the uh, close the shape and I just realized that I didn't go up a little bit on the shoulder uh, because of course the shoulder needs a little bit of extra uh, to go around it as well okay so let's uh, not worry about the shape too much just yet uh, we're going to select this piece and then symmetric pattern with sewing and that will create the other side for me and I can sew those together uh, so the sewing tool is here we uh, go to segment sewing and then click on one side and click on the other and that will sew those front pieces together now rather than do all that again at the back I'm going to select them both and copy and then right click and mirror paste to pop that in there we go now these pieces I want to be around the back so you could either select them and rotate them round they must be rotated and then move them around the back or uh, if I come out we could use arrangement points so uh, the arrangement points if you uh, click here to get the avatar properties up and click on whoops show arrangement points it gives you lots of points around the body that you can arrange pieces on and if I pick somewhere around the middle of her back there that should do the job although it's reversed them which is terrific let me move those back to where they were and then do it there we go now they're the right sort of orientation uh, but too high so I need a lower spot that's st still too high there we go so similarly for the front ones I can just move those out of the way and pick the corresponding um, arrangement point on the front and if I press shift F it will turn the arrangement points off shift F will turn them off and on okay so now we need to sew up the rest of the dress and for that We'll go back to the, our sewing tools and this time i want free sewing free sewing allows me to sew several segments at the same time 
So if I sew from here, I've just clicked on that bottom point and move my uh, mouse up and click on the last point. And now I just need to figure out which one of these it sews to, which I believe will be this one. There we go. And you can tell if it works because you'll get a straight line from front to back. Um, if you pick the wrong one, it will uh, sew oddly off to one side and you'll, you'll notice. Um, so you'll note that because we've got our symmetric patterning on, uh, it's sewed up both sides at the same time and that's you know just part of saving time with the symmetric pattern uh, and sewing option. So I'm going to sew up the, um, uh, the shoulders there and I'm just going to select all of our pieces here. Oops, need to go on to the transform tool and click into the viewport and I'm just going to raise them up a bit so that the uh, shoulder lines are going over the shoulders and not through them. And then we can hit the simulate button and it will sew up to our model. Now as you can see it's terrible. You know we haven't got the shape right and we need to do some adjustments. So in the next video we'll start to adjust our, um, our dress so that it fits nicely and hasn't got any horrible bulgy bits all over the place. So I'll talk to you then. Okay, so the first thing we'll fix is these horrible little flappy bits around the uh, the hips there. And that's just quite a question of uh, using the curve tool. So up on your tools up here, uh, not those tools, these tools, uh, we have smooth curve. And what that will do for us is take a point and smooth either side of it. Um, but I want to make sure that I do the same on the back as I do on the front. So just left click on that point and move it out until you're happy and then right click and just key in a, a, a length, a sensible length, something close to what you've got and click OK and now we can repeat that on the back. So move out with the left mouse button, right click before you let go of the mouse and then type in the distance and that will keep these seam lines the same distance and that's quite useful in that you know if they're not the same distance you can get some rumpling they can be a little bit out but not too far uh, so let me press space which will activate my thing and I'm getting a little bit of wrinkle there and that might be because uh, I've not gone far enough or I've gone too far I think not far enough so I'm going to control Z a couple of times until I get back to there and I'm going to left click drag out I'm going to do a much longer drag this time and let's make it 140 I like round numbers there we go round numbers are easy I can remember them so left click keep your mouse down and then right click and then you can let go Oh, and I've got that one spot on, 140, there we go. And press space, and that should tighten up a bit. There we go. Don't worry about the uh, the fact that you've got sort of two different sides on the, on the front and the back at the moment. We will deal with that when we, uh, when we go to the next kind of stage. So another issue is uh, the arms. They're not up tight enough to the armpits. So we'll go to the edit pattern tool and then I'm going to just, whoops, I didn't select the edit pattern tool. There we go. Have I selected it? No, I still haven't selected it. Edit pattern, there we go. Um, so just draw a box over to select those points and then grab them and move them up. If you hold the shift button down you'll get these snap lines and you can snap into a direction and I just want to be uh, you know snapping up in this case and then press space to activate the uh, the simulation and now we've got a few other things to deal with uh, okay so rather than drag this bit on uh, I'm going to go to 
uh, do this bit in the next video where we'll adjust the arm uh, holes the shoulder holes to uh, have them fit much better so I will talk to you then okay so next we want to sort these sleeves out and you'll see that they're sort of gaping a bit and not fitting very well and we need to put a curve in this line here and this line here so if we click on the the tools palette there and go to edit curvature I'm going to just curve that inwards and you'll see that brings it away from the arm as it should do and also that on the back one will do the same and press space there we go so that's not too bad but we've got this little bit of extra um, little bit of extra material here and we've got a couple of choices on there uh, but I think the most efficient in this case is the um, is to put a, a dart in essentially which is just going to take a wedge of material out and sew it back together again so uh, we need a dart so uh, there is a dart tool uh, but that's not what we want here uh, the dart tool will put a diamond in we want a, 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 a triangle uh, so I'm going to go to add point add point there we go and before I do add that point I'm going to click somewhere around where the gape is happening and now I can see on the 2d pattern where that is and I'll pop a, a point in there sorry brain <laughs> it just went completely out of my head <laughs> uh, and I'll just make it easy on myself and put a point either side and edit pattern and I'm going to drag this middle point seem to have trouble in the new version picking tools I don't know what that's about and I'm going to drag that inwards now you'll notice this has got curves in it at the moment uh, but if I select that line I can delete all curve points and similar for this one delete all curve points and now I've got a uh, a little dart and we can sew that up with the sewing tool so I can go to segment sewing and just sew those up and press space and that should do the job now you can adjust it and the general feeling is that you uh, point the dart towards the highest point in the uh, model and that's somewhere around a nipple uh, which I've clicked on and that's down there so if I uh, edit the pattern select this point whoops I've lost my uh, point there whoops <laughs> now I've got too much selected edit pattern I'm just going to drag that towards that point and then press space and that has a tendency if, if you have darts going in all sorts of different directions um, they have a tendency to kind of pucker up at one end and uh, we don't want that of course uh, so what you know pointing it towards the the high point of the dress um, you know it has a tendency to minimize that there we go so that's uh, not looking too bad now we've got a little bit of an issue here uh, I think that's because I've either got it too high or my curve point is uh, not doing well I'm just going to drop one end so select that point and that point and just bring them down the same sort of value and then press space and that's not too bad there we go so now we've adjusted most of it uh, we are going to uh, do some continual adjustments uh, but next uh, before I get uh, too windy uh, we all will do uh, the neckline so I shall talk to you next okay so the neck fitting is relatively straightforward we want our curve tool uh, so we want edit curvature and then I'm going to zoom into my thing here I'm just going to stop my simulation actually because it just takes up resources 
and then I'll put a small curve into the neck or the neck line and similarly on the back uh, but the back you know it's probably too low uh, where it is so if I go to edit pattern again and grab those points and just bring them up a bit there we go now my curve point is wrong but uh, you can fix that so if you select this point you'll see it has a curve handle so just bring that curve handle down and not too far down if you go beyond you're going to get a weird kind of uh, point uh, but anything above kind of para you know parallel to it is, is usually good and then press space and there we go we have a nice neckline um, the front is a little bit out in that it's coming to a kind of a point I don't want it to come to a point I want it to be a bit more uh, smooth so again select that point and on the curve handle you can bring it down and out and you should be able to find an angle there that fits quite quite nicely okay so our last real adjustment is going to be the back we've got a lot of cloth there and you know that can be okay uh, but if we want this to be a bit more form-fitting uh, I want to take some of that out to uh, you know bring it in a little bit so I will talk to you in the next section okay so uh, we want to take this material out from here and there's a few ways to do it um, there are complicated ways and there are less complicated ways we're going to go for a less complicated and I'm just going to switch my tool over to the curvature tool and then somewhere around the middle of the dress here if I click on that point yeah that's where the damage is being done I'm just going to curve the whole of the back to take out a whole bunch of material and then press space and you know depending upon what you want I'm not unhappy with that um, you know because I understand that you know some dresses do bunch up and have a bit of uh, fabric at the back um, you could leave it that way or you could give it a little bit more if you wanted just until it gets right but don't go too far uh, because generally speaking then you you have problems at either end where there's not enough material at the top and uh, so on and so forth okay so uh, that was a very quick fix on the back and uh, next we're going to have a look at putting the collar in so I will talk to you then okay so let's look at the collar now before I do uh, start to draw out pieces for this what I want to do is make sure my curve around the collar is sensible so I'm going to pick uh, this piece and this piece uh, which match up and I can tell that uh, by the fact that the pieces I've selected are joined uh, I can right click on here and match and uh, to start and you'll see then that they uh, give me a nice little matched up uh, selection there now I just want to make sure that this is a nice smooth curve and I think it's okay I might deepen that a little bit because I don't want there to be any weird angles here I want this to be a nice flat curve as it's coming around and joining those pieces up okay so let's uh, pop that back where it came from just do that round you'll notice that the other one is uh, doing more or less the same thing because they're mirrored or symmetric rather and now we're ready to go so what I need for here is a uh, single piece of strip of cloth that's going to go around both my um, open edges here and if I select them both it will tell me in the properties of editor how long it is so I want the uh, 2d line length which is 141.3 millimeters so if we then go to the uh, pattern tool here to get the rectangle up I can click into the viewport and type 140 what was it 141.3 so 
so I'd already forgotten that's old man brain for you and maybe 30 high and click OK and now we want to sew these together so I'm going to use my arrangement points so shift F and oh, I don't have any arrangement points around the neck which is annoying but I'll use this one and then I'll move it in a bit closer there we go perhaps rotate it a little bit around and then shift F to turn off the arrangement points that's good now I want to sew this back piece to the back piece here and then the front piece to the front piece which makes sense and we can do that with the free sewing tool uh, so let's go to the sewing tools and pick the free sewing and if I click this point and then click this point and then on the collar click that point you'll see a little blue dot appears and that's the exact length of this piece here this seam so if I click to there that will sew to it and then we could do a similar job on the back I click here up to this end point and then when I click here uh, you'll see it put it on the top because it thought I was going in that direction uh, but I'll match it up with that point there and that should be good and then we'll just go back to the transform tool and select it and then right click symmetric pattern with sewing and I'll just pop it off to one side here and then grab it and move it into place now when I uh, sew these back up we should be ready to give it a try and it won't be ready yet because there's a few properties we have to do have to select to get that going sorry I keep picking the wrong tool I don't know where my brain is today there we go sew the back up uh, that sewn the front up which isn't too bad at this point in time because at least it will stay uh, vertical in actuality I've sewn the front up but not the back up <laughs> So that's a, a bit of a mess up on my part. There we go. There. So now we have a nice standing up collar. Uh, but if I do take out that seam by using the edit tool and then delete that and press space, no, it's staying upright. So I'm happy with that. That's good. Okay, so if I look at the um, the, the reference these kind of curve down at the end we could do that with our uh, little curve tool so if I go back up to my tools again and click because that seems to be what it wants and pick the smooth curve I can just curve that off there and that will give me that nice kind of uh, smooth transition so we have most of the shape now what we don't have is the wrap around and that's what we're going to do in the next one so i'll talk to you then okay so what we're going to do is uh, extend one of these sides over to uh, give us a piece which we can tuck under a, a sew to here and uh, have loose down the front so let's do that um, I'm going to go to my pattern tool and just move that out of the way and then we'll go to the edit pattern and select this line and we'll right click and offset as pattern outline it doesn't really matter how far you go I'm just going to go 50 for the sake of it and then click OK now the slight problem here is uh, I've got symmetric sewing on or symmetric patterning on so I need to break that sorry about that so let me select these two right click and remove linked editing now I can make them uh, different so let's uh, grab this line again and right click and offset as pattern outline there we go so now I have a piece uh, the problem is that if I go to edit sewing it's still sewn to there and it's not sewn to this bit because this bit doesn't exist anymore so what we need to do is delete this sewing line and we also need an internal poly line so if I click on this top um, point here and then go down to the bottom and uh, double click on the bottom 
it will add in a line for me and now I can sew those back so if I go to my segment sewing tool I can sew from there to there and now I have a flap uh, loose basically uh, so if I press the space bar that should uh, sim uh, but it's likely to kind of dip into the pattern below and you just have to kind of tease it out at this point in time pull it quite hard it, it's quite a tight dress so it's not going to go flapping around all over the place there we go so now it's on top which is perfect that's exactly what we want I'm just going to grab that and perhaps drag it over and see if it comes it won't <laughs> of course not too easy okay so let me turn the sim off uh, but we do need to shape this of course so what I'm going to do first is grab this line and move it out quite a bit and I'm going to grab this top line, top point and bring it down to just below where her um, armpit is and then I'll press space and now I should be able to drag this over and have it stay where I want it to there we go so what's left to do is to sew this in place so if I turn the sim off and use my free sewing tool I'm going to click from just under her armpit to there and then there down to the little blue point suggestion there and then I'll press space and now we have a little bit around the front which is wrapping around now there's a little bit of uh, crease down the middle which is not desirable <laughs> but in theory we should be able to do something about that but I want to do something about this first uh, so let's do that so this is flapping a bit so it's too long this line is too long so we need to shorten it so we can do that simply by whoops grabbing this line and moving it this way a little bit and then pressing space and keep going until we're getting somewhere close to uh, as it should be so that's not the last step we can do a little bit more to tighten that up but I'm going to do that towards the end of the tutorial uh, when we come back we're going to have a look at uh, getting rid of this horrible line down the middle okay so I will talk to you then okay so getting rid of this horrible seam down the middle uh, is pretty simple at this point in time uh, because it's the dress is kind of nicely fitting and it's sewn uh, well uh, we can delete this line and let it sim and it will just work um, because there's nothing really kind of too tight or too stretchy or too you know uh, small for her on it uh, there's plenty of fabric around so it's not going to go crazy which is terrific and exactly what we want see a little bit of something going on in there that I'm not sure about but that should be okay oh I see that's pulling it too far forward right so we'll deal with that in a moment or two um, so uh, we also have a line down the back and that's slightly more problematic because uh, we've got a bend in here and if I just join these together um, it's going to fill it in which is not what I want so I'm actually going to take my curve out uh, so let's take the curve out a little bit where is delete all curve points there it is and I'm going to just move that in a little bit perhaps straighten that one up and let that sim and now I've got all that horrible material back so I need to take it out a little bit more there we go that's better okay so because I've moved that it's changed <laughs> it's changed my collar distances uh, yeah you get this all the time you know you get to one point you think you're about right and uh, that it goes wrong so what I'm going to do is just grab the end here and move it in a little bit and then let it sim 
and that seems to be pulling and that's because my back is now not tight enough so yeah I, th I think we might have to put up with that for this one so I'm going to right click on that one and then merge those lines oops I'm going to select both lines first and merge patterns cannot be merged check for overlaps well that's because my patterns aren't straight which is terrific uh, so these two points I need to align so if I right click here and align and I always get this wrong yeah every time I get it wrong so it's right click align and this one is centers and then I press space there we go and then I'll select and merge it still doesn't like it <laughs> uh, the joys of tutorials they always uh, prove more of a challenge than they should do okay so why is that happening well somewhere it's there's a point that's not quite right and it's there look see this little handle as I crushed it up it uh, adjusted that curve and made it uh, a little bit how can I put it uh, wrong so if I now select these I should be able to merge them there we go right let's sim that and see what it looks like I think I'm going to bring this point up I might need to adjust my curve a little bit so that that uh, compensates a little bit for it this handles too long now and this one's too far up so let's bring that down and there we go that's much much better okay so that's taking the horrible lines out uh, next we'll start looking at uh, material properties I think uh, because we're using the default material at the moment and it's not necessarily uh, a good one for this dress so I will talk to you in the next section okay so let's uh, do a bit of adjusting and uh, look at the materials uh, I've just noticed that my necks pulling apart here so what I'm going to do is uh, grab this piece and this piece let's pop that over to the other side with the transform tool and I'm going to select the edit pattern and this edge and this edge and I'm just going to inch them over a little bit there we go, press space and now they should be a little bit further over uh, but I see that there's a point there that I managed not to move oh I see, there's another piece there so this piece and this piece and just move them over just a little bit just trying to close the gap up There we go, that's better. It's a little bit gaping at the back, but uh, yeah, we'll sort that out. Okay, so uh, for the dress then, if I select all of it, um, I can see some properties. So we have a particle distance, which is the resolution of the dress. Particle distance is essentially, it's the point distance between one vertex and the next. So 20, it's a bit of an approximation, because um, some of will be longer than others um, is kind of your default and is pretty low res um, we can see it actually uh, if I go to the garment properties and look at uh, the mesh option oh come on there we go you can see the, the mesh there and it's made up of triangles and they're all approximately 20 millimeters apart uh, so if we increase that so to 15 we'll get a slightly denser mesh and then you know we can oops let's go back to textured surface we can resim and it should improve a little bit so some things will become you know some curved parts will become um, more smooth you can see the collar still got some jagged in it um, but yeah it ultimately we'll probably get to much higher versions uh, much higher uh, point distances than that but for the moment I think 15 is enough just try to tease that bit of that little bit over 
so it comes under there we go that's better okay so on the fabric itself uh, we're well actually on the patterns you'll see that there is a fabric assigned and you can assign different fabrics to different parts uh, but at the moment we're all completely on uh, fabric one so if I click on fabric one we should get its properties up double click rather so in the property editor it's got a name and uh, I'll just call it dress for the moment uh, we've got a classification um, so it's a content classification uh, I, I don't really mess with that we have a material type uh, with PBR or substance there are substance textures here you can use um, and other than that we have the material so I've left it on PBR um, we have texturing we've got front back and side that's for if you put thickness onto your um, into your preview and then below that we've got all sorts of things like color so for color I'm gonna perhaps go to a dark gray a little darker than that I think and uh, one thing that you know this dress is it's supposed to be a bit more on the silky side than um, you know just plain like this and we have a type here so we can slip this over to a silk satin and now we have a silk satin style dress there we go so similarly let's look at the properties again um, we've got a color and opacity you know if you've got a panel which might be a little bit uh, transparent you can change your opacity on that one uh, roughness we have the intensity there this is silky so it's not very rough so we're down at 35 uh, if I take it right down we're heading towards the realms of uh, PVC so let's take that back up to 35 there we go we've got our reflection intensity and I can take that down and you'll see it takes some of the intensity out of the reflection so you can adjust that to your taste if you take it right up it'll be really shiny uh, I'm gonna leave it somewhere around the middle um, and then we have metalness uh, that's you yeah, mostly for buttons and such like we can you know set a texture for a button which is metallic uh, other than that we have the physical property and we have a lot of custom options here so if I open up this preset here we've got a lot of different um, pieces of different properties we can tweak um, density for example is the weight of the cloth if you make it really dense it will weigh and it will look like it's heavy and it will droop a bit more and if I increase this now and let the sim run oh the sim's already running it's going to start to uh, suffer the effects of gravity a bit more so if we go back to uh, the dress material turn that up even more you see that the skirt dropped out then because it's behaving more like a much heavier material more like a you know a leather than a, a lighter satiny material so I'm gonna leave that sort of somewhere around 43 and uh, we also have friction uh, friction is not necessarily what you think it is um, it's friction between different pattern pieces and it's not friction between the model and the dress it's friction between the dress pieces and if you have a layered outfit like with a, a top and a you know a smaller top underneath and then a pants or a skirt it's how they connect to each other so uh, this has got some uh, layers to it so I could increase the friction or decrease the friction and they will either you know stick to each other a little bit better or they will um, slide so let me select that and I'm going to increase the friction a little bit in hopes that it keeps this piece underneath it a bit better there we go okay so what else have we got here uh, let's make sure I clicked on the dress um, there are all sorts of options down here and it's mostly a trial and error <laughs> uh, I don't really want to touch any for this particular one because I think it's working fairly well uh, but we also have if I close that up a whole bunch of presets so we've got silk and chiffon and all sorts and wools and uh, you know nylons knits cottons all sorts of things so if you have a knowledge of 
those materials and how they behave. Uh, I'm told, and I've no reason not to believe it, that uh, Marvelous Designer is pretty close to accurate uh, when you're picking those presets. Okay, so um, yeah, I mean that's more or less a dress. Uh, we've got a little bit more to do on it. I want to put some trims in it and uh, give it maybe a, a little bit of detail. Um, but I think what I'm going to do now is save it and then when we come back we're going to sim it uh, to see what it looks like. So I will talk to you then. Okay so we're ready to uh, see what the sim looks like now and if I expose the animation editor at the bottom and uh, you can see I've simmed it once already uh, but what I'm going to do is re-sim it. So if I uh, delete that line there and just press this record button at the beginning, it's not really labelled very well. Uh, it take, took me a while to find it uh, when I first started using MD anyway. Um, so I could just click this and it will start to click through. It looks like it's going really fast, but actually it's just because I'm really zoomed into the timeline. Uh, but you can see it's uh, running in the uh, sim and it's holding up pretty well it's not flying all over the place as some things uh, tend to uh, but yeah we'll see how it uh, how it gets on come on you can do it is it there no it's coming back out again uh, you'll notice there's a separate figure in this for the eyelashes that's because Genesis has a separate figure for the eyelashes and I forgot to remove it it's my fault There we go. Is it still going? Just a little bit, maybe? No, there we go. So that's the full sim. And of course, we have uh, any, you know, any of these uh, frames within here uh, we can look at. Uh, where are we? I'm just going to uh, step back through it a little bit. Uh, so this button will step my frames backwards and you see I've got hundreds and hundreds of frames so I can just actually type in here at 250 and it will take me to another frame and yeah I, I think that looks nice with all the uh, kind of folds and things uh, going down there uh, so that's the the sim part and I'm just going to take this right back to frame one uh, because next what we're going to do is uh, cut some of these up and do some shaping uh, to get a bit more of an interesting look so I'll talk to you then. Okay, so let's uh, just put a little bit of trim around the bottom here and maybe some at the top. So I'm going to delete that point there and I'm going to delete the point in the middle and then I'm going to select all of these lines on the bottom and right click and offset as internal line. Uh, I'll make it maybe 30 millimeters to give it a bit more and make sure extend is selected and then click OK and now I can select these lines and then right click and cut and sew now on our materials I can make a copy of our dress and uh, change the colour so I've got all the same um, you know, physical properties we're just going to change the color so I'm going to go for a kind of a darkish red and then if I select all these with the pattern transform tool on this um, material we can hit the apply button over on the right and there we go and then I'll press space now you might notice there's some differences and sometimes that happens and I'm not entirely sure why uh, well I can pretty sure why here I seem to have offset differently for each so let me undo that one oh I offset it twice it's because I'm an idiot sorry it's my fault wasn't paying attention let's just quickly do that so cut and sew and copy my material update the color try not to be an idiot right so select them and then apply there we go so if I press space now it will start to sim again there we go and uh, it'd be nice to have a little bit of color at the top so perhaps we'll make the collar 
um, a different color as well about the same color let's not go too mad so I'll select both those and apply and I'll turn my sim off because it's just causing me grief there we go so the last thing I want to do is put like a uh, a bit of a yoke in and we'll do that at the back so if I um, grab my internal line tool here I'm just going to select across the pattern and double click and that's okay whoops all oh, that didn't extend to the end if you don't extend to the end if you go to edit pattern and select the last point right click on that point and extend to trim in this case I want to extend uh, yeah to pattern outline there we go so that's a bit kind of uh, bowed the wrong way so let's uh, use our edit curvature I'm just going to grab the middle and bring it down just eyeballing it here I want it to be a little bit curved I don't want it to be completely straight and then with the edit pattern tool we'll right click and uh, cut and sew and then finally apply our red to it there we go I could bring that I could do that at the front as well but I'm conscious that you know I don't want to spend too much time fiddling <laughs> around uh, because yeah you'll get bored but let's do it anyway so right click offset as internal line and click OK right click cut and sew select both pieces and apply the material there we go okay so we're getting somewhere between a uh, oriental dress now and a Star Trek uniform <laughs> I didn't really think about that but never mind um, so yes just go go around cut pieces you know add uh, detail add some trim you know make it uh, your own essentially make it what you want and uh, I, d I think the results quite pleasant and uh, the last thing I'll do is just rerun my animation uh, simulation to um, yeah get it to look get it to at least a point where I can find a frame that I'm happy with but yes I hope you found that useful sorry I'm a bit distracted uh, with my own thought um, but that's a, a pretty simple dress from a you know for a Daz avatar um, work with any avatar of course you know um, but yeah I, did, I hope you found that useful and I hope it sort of gives you a bit more confidence to go on and, and do a little bit more yourselves so um, I will talk to you in another uh, video set okay one last thing then um, sorry I was looking through it and thinking you know I hadn't really completed it so I want to show um, how you can use images with you know textures in here and all I want to do really is vary the shininess so under reflection on the material uh, we have an option of intensity or map if I switch to map I can click this uh, little thing here and uh, go to uh, another folder where I've got my textures and I've got a PNG in here that might do the job and you can see now that I've got kind of a lace pattern on this <coughs> and where you know the lace pattern is uh, light it's gone uh, quite uh, matte and where it's not it's gone quite shiny so yes you know with some very simple sort of techniques you can do that and we could do that on the uh, the bottom as well uh, where are we I want the uh, roughness map there we go let's take the map pop our map in there I could use a different one if I wanted uh, you know it wouldn't make an awful lot of difference um, let's have a look to what else we've got here that's a trash can I was just seeing if I could um, adjust it in terms of uh, flipping it oh there is an invert button so if you don't like it you can invert it and I was just thinking I don't like this I wish I could invert it uh, so we'll click invert there there we go 
Um, map intensity and reflection intensity we can still adjust so we can go from very plasticky to quite mild and yeah so now we have a nice address I think it's uh, at least got some kind of variation in the uh, in the fabric texture so there you go just one last little thing and uh, I'll talk to you in another set talk soon